This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Chicago White Sox face the Toronto Blue Jays at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto for opening day on Thursday, April 7, 1977. Chicago was managed by first-year manager Bob Lemon. Owner Bill Veek hired Lemon to succeed Paul Richards as the White Sox manager in the wake of finishing in last place in the AL West in 1976. Toronto was managed by Roy Hartsfeld and were playing the first game in franchise history after the league expanded to include the Blue Jays and Mariners for the 1977 season. This audio recording is from the Chicago Radio Broadcast featuring announcers Lauren Brown, Jimmy Pearsall, and Harry Carey. By a chorus of boos here in Toronto as he leads it off. Gar in spring training. Wound up hitting 290, two homers and six RBIs. Here is the first pitch ever of a baseball game in the American League in Canada that took all strikes. You know why at the first pitch guy took all spring? It's because they want to put that in the Hall of Fame up here. It's the first ball ever thrown. First ball. Will be taken to the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. Here's Bill Singer's second delivery. Look at this. Just got a piece of it, actually. Boy, I'll tell you, with these white home uniforms, you almost can't see the Toronto outfielders in the snow. <laughs> I'm proud. Right-hander goes into the lineup. Here's the two-strike pitch. Outside of all. Defensively, Doug Alts at first. Pedro Garcia's at second. Hector Torres at short. And Dave McKay at third. And now the trainer comes running out and gives a scraper to the pitcher, Bill Singer. Apparently a little of that moisture got on the mound. He's got some mud in his cleats. And Roy Hartsfield just came out and asked Nestor if it was okay if they kept it out there. The scraper. In the outfield, John Scott in left, Gary Wood in center field. And in right field, Steve Bowling. Here's the pitch, hits the plate and goes back to the screen. Evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. The snow has stopped. Here's the pitch. Off the catcher's mask and the count goes full. Off his uh, chest protector, I should say. And it goes full now. Three balls and two strikes. Now will be followed by Alan Bannister and George Orta. Well, I'll tell you, we got a middle of this lineup. Orta, Ziff, Spencer, and Gamble. Then when he's not playing, Lamar Johnson. We can put some people on base. We don't have any lands in there right now, so they got to be careful. you got to get your good stuff over. Jim Essie and warming up Ken Brett. Now Brian Downing trotting down towards the bullpen after Dave McKay goes out to the mound to talk to Singer. The count is full. Right-hander in the windup. Here's the pitch. Up high and outside of all. Looks like he might have slipped, Jim. Can you imagine Gar going to face some balls? Everybody wants him to walk. He just showed it. It's a new year. Ralph Gar does not walk often. And the batter is Alan Bannister. Hit 221 in the spring. No homers and six RBIs. White Sox as a team hit 272 down in the spring training. And that's not bad. I'll settle for that for the year. And we've been running a lot. And I would have to feel that the way the weather is today, we want to get a run as quick as possible. Even that be button right here. Bannister really looking down now. He wasn't too sure whether the hit and run was on, I guess. Working out of the stretch, Gar with the lead off the first, not going. The pitch inside of all. So after getting out in front of Ralph Gar, 0-2, Singer now has missed on five consecutive pitches. Here's a toss over to first, and Gar that time was just a step off the bag. A year ago, Singer beat the White Sox two times and lost once. Right-hander delivers. Here's the pitch, half swing and a foul into the seat. The first foul ball. The fans all excited about that. It's going to first everything. A ball and a strike. You know, if Bannister would drag a bunt right now, the third base in the K is really back. One ball and one strike. Gar with the lead. We're in the first if you just joined us. Right-handed delivers a fastball low. Two balls and a strike. Lifetime, Singer has won six and lost five against the White Sox. He was 4-1 and one at Texas last year, and then got traded. None other than Burt Blyleven. Guy's a walking medical encyclopedia. If anything can go wrong with you, it's gone wrong with him. Here's a toss over to first runner back in time. Outfield playing Bannister straight away. 
Here's the pitch, high and inside with a fastball. This is three and one. Now Cerrone out in front of the plate yells something out to Singer. Last time uh, Singer worked was April 4th, I guess, and he only worked one inning. Didn't have much of a spring, so he's showing why he's a little wild. Three balls and a strike. Runner at first, nobody out. We're in the first inning in Toronto. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch. Call strike at the inside corner. Throw to second. He is safe as the ball gets away from the second base. But now Gar's trying to go to third. Here's the throw. He slides in safely. Garcia did not see the ball because of the snow. It hit the base and went out. And he completely lost it, Jimmy. He lost it. And then he couldn't pick it up and get his footing. He slipped all over the place. It wasn't that far. Uh-oh. And Gar is hurt. He slid into third. He hurt his shin or his ankle. Charlie Sad is down there with him. Bob Lemon comes out now. Well, last time I remember you being on the air with us, he heard himself sliding into second because he is hesitant on whether he should slide or shouldn't. And I know you talked to him about it this spring. Yeah, but he slid quite a way, as you can see his mark. But it's kind of dangerous out there right now. He just slid right into the bag, full force. He knew he had to get there in a hurry. And when he slid, he just got too close to the bag. He's Hopefully right. he'll be all right. So it'll be a stolen base and an error on the catcher. We presume. <laughs> yeah, we had some fun. The guy said, no, don't, don't get out of me this spring. <laughs> so a runner at third. And the board has the count three and one, but that was a called strike. It's a 3-2 count. Singer had a 6.60 earned run average. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right field. Coming over is the right fielder. He has it. Here's the throw into the infield. Third. Good throw by Steve Bowling, the right fielder. I'll tell you, that would have been a close play at the plate. The ball is in front of the plate to the right side. But Bobby Knopf held up Ralph Garn, I think, partially because of the fact that he just came up with that ankle injury. And there's nobody out, and uh, all we have to do is hit a ground ball somewhere in the infield. Everybody's playing back to get this one in. That ball was not hit too far. So there's one out in George Orta. Steps in back at his second base spot. Time is called momentarily by Ralph Gar. Orta hit 338 with a homer and 10 RBIs in the spring. Infield playing in now with one out. Trying to cut that run off of the plate. Here's a pitch. Here's a swing and a bit of fly ball to center field. Gary Woods is there. Gar is tagging up. He's got it. Here goes the runner headed for the front of the plate. Here's the throw in and it's not cut off, but Gar is about five feet in front, and he goes rushing into Richie Zisk. Zisk was waiting to tell him whether to slide or not, and the White Sox have scored the first run in Canada in American League history. That's a good break for us to get off the front, make this club come from behind if they're going to win this ball game. We, we can score runs, and Zisk now coming to the plate is really the guy that can hit one out of here. Number 22. Richie Zisk, a welcome addition to the White Sox. He hit 333 in the spring with a homer and five RBIs. And a great producer for the Pirates over the years. Takes a look at a ball. Last year, he tied the Pirates for the lead in home runs with 21 and hits with 168. And was only one RBI away from being the RBI leader with 89 as he takes a look at ball two down low. And he also led the club in doubles with 35. And he led the Pirates in game-winning RBIs the last three years. Well, Steve Stone told me, Jimmy, he worried about two guys on the Pirates, Richie Zisk and Al Oliver. No question, this guy has great bat control. Right-hander delivers the 2 old pitchers, a swing and a long drive to center field, going way back is Woods. This ball might get out of here. It is gone! A home run! Richie Zisk in his first American League time at bat, puts it straight over the fence in center field, and it's a 2 to nothing ball game. Welcome to the American League, Richard Ziff. He's my kind of player, I'll tell you that right now. He's going to answer the ball, I think. So the Polish Prince gives the White Sox a 2 to nothing lead. You know, he hit that ball dead center and was still going went over the center field fence. The fence beyond the inside fence. So it's a 2 to nothing ball game, and Jim Spencer's the batter. It was hard to tell whether Wood would catch up with it or not. He drifted back as if he had a play. But it's... Had no problem getting over that 12-foot fence that extends from the left field corner around to the right field corner. As of now, I'm glad we're playing. Spencer hit 300 in the spring, four homers and nine RBIs. 
is a swing and a bouncer. It's going to get through a base hit. Just to the right of second base. Spencer makes the turn at first and will go back. So the White Sox, with their second hit of the inning, have a runner at first and Oscar Gamble the batter. Spencer getting jammed right on the fist, but that acid turf, the ball just skidded right off the wet portion of it or right on the center field because he did not hit that ball good at all. Oscar Gamble just over to the White Sox from the Bucky Dent deal. A left-handed hitter. Oscar had 17 home runs for the Yankees a year ago. Here's the pitch called strike off the outside corner. Singer getting behind has gotten himself in trouble. He has to pitch like he just pitched to Gamble on the outside corner and down. Gamble has not played a lot this spring. He had some flu problems, and here's a pitch lower ball. Isn't it amazing? Every time a new player joins the club, right away he's in the lineup. I hope he has a super day for it. Well, they didn't know whether he was going to make it or not. He had given indications that uh, he was going to go home and quit the game, but he is here today in uniform and playing. With the first inning, White Sox out in front. Two to nothing. A 1-1 count on the batter. Runner at first and two down. Right-hander delivers. Here's the pitch up high of all. Two and one. Campbell, uh, his luggage was lost, and he was worried about his gloves. They say, we well, don't need your glove over here. <laughs> Just bring your back. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Spencer with the lead off of first. Here's the pitch outside of all. The White Sox and the Blue Jays will have good Friday off tomorrow. And then resume action Saturday and Sunday. Three balls and a strike to the batter. Here's a toss over to first. Spencer back in time. Chris Knapp will be going for the White Sox tomorrow to really look good in spring training, especially his last outing. Here's a pitch outside of all he walked in. That's the second walk in the inning given up by Singer. And we're going to have some activity down in the Toronto Blue bullpen. Might be Pete Vukovic. Looks a little like Pete as he's trotting down there. Has his warm-up jacket on. We'll have to wait and see. Singer throwing much better than he did the first three hitters, but uh, as I said before, he's trying to hit the corners and not pitching too much this spring. He's having his troubles. And they go longer with a, a better like him. Gary would pitch and get maybe five runs in the second inning, but he'd still be in there because they always figured he'd come back. Well, we talked about the break with Porter's this Spencer and then Gamble. And we neglected to mention this fellow, Eric Satterholm. 308 hitter in the spring, two homers and 10 RBIs. Another welcome addition to the Chicago White Sox. Number 12, the third baseman, Eric Satterholm. At his best year in 1975, hit 286, 11 homers and 58 RBIs. Takes the first pitch for a ball. At one time during that year, he was on a hot streak, hitting 349 and had seven homers, and then unfortunately he was injured. I'll tell you about that in a second. Singer out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. Look at him is. He accidentally fell into a hole at a construction site, fractured two ribs and was out the rest of the year and had cartilage damage in his left knee. So he did not play at all last year for Minnesota, and thus, in effect, played out his option. A swing and a miss and a fastball. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Jim Spencer down at second base. Oscar Gamble at first. On a cold afternoon in Toronto, Canada. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a shot down the left field line. It is a foul ball. Bounces up into the seat. The last three pitches of Sonner home have all been breaking balls and high. So Singer's been lucky to get away with them. And that ball, if it was fair, would have been a, scored a couple of runs. So the count remains the same. One ball and two strikes. Jerry Johnson warming up in the bullpen, a right-hander. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a bouncer to the shortstop. Torres, he's got it. Goes to second to Garcia for the fourth out on Gamble. And that retires the side. But here in the first inning, the Chicago White Sox come up with two runs on two hits. There was one error and two men left down. But at the end of a half inning of play, the White Sox do, the Blue Jays coming to bat. I got it, I got it, I got it, it's there. Louise! Hi, Mom. How are my favorite twin chocolates? Fine. We're going shopping, right, girls? Right, 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 right. Adorable. 
When you've got a lot to buy, shop there. Now through Saturday, for instance, girls' 10-pack panties are just $3.99. And Mrs. 10-packs are $3.99 and $4.99. My, it must be hard shopping for quintuplets these days. No, I just get five of everything. As for selection, there has assorted prints and solids for girls. Bikini, hip huggers, or briefs for Mrs. All for great prices. But dear, how do you buy clothes? We get a bank loan. So come to Zare. Now through Saturday, girls' 10-pack panties are just $3.99. Mrs. 10-packs are $3.99 and $4.99. You can charge everything, and you'll save, no matter how many packs you need. We've got to go, Mom. Okay. Bye, dear. Bye. Give my love to the twins. Compare. You can't do better than Zare. Jimmy Pearsall as we go to the bottom of the first inning. Ben Brett getting ready to get in his warm-up toss as they're putting some dirt around the mound and the home plate area. And as they do, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WMAQ Chicago. with Brian Downey. Let's take a look at the Chicago White Sox defense. Jim Spencer's at first base. George Ortiz at second. Alan Bannister's at shortstop. And Eric Soderholm's at third. Brian Downing doing the catching. While in the outfield, Ralph Gar in left field, Seth Lemon in center, and Richie Disk in right. On the mound, Ken Brett, he won 10 and lost 12 last year with an earned run average of 3.32. Brett this spring, one one and lost three with an earned run average of 5.67. He had a great outing about a week ago against the Pirates. And then so-so in his last outing. But I don't think where it counts. I don't think he can motivate himself. He's the type of guy that has got to be pitching the regular season. Uh, he just can't seem to uh, reach back and fire hard. I talked to him before the game and asked him how he felt about the opening up. He was thrilled to death. You know, he's a loosey-goosey guy. And... Uh, uh, he, give you a quick answer if you give a bad hit question. All those Virgos are. All <laughs> those Virgos are. And I, uh, I got to believe he'll pitch a fine ball game. Well, Brett won shutouts in three of his first four ball games that he pitched for the White Sox last year. His 10 victories was high on the Sox staff, and he also taught 16 complete games in 26. And he had the best earned run average among the White Sox starters with 328. Johnny Scott it off to left fielder, played in Hawaii last year where he hit 315, 15 homers and 82 RBIs. He's the only guy in this ball club that can steal bases, so he's got to be very careful when he's on base. He's a right-handed hitter. Jackie Moore in the coach's box at third. He was with the Texas Rangers last year, and Harry Warner coaching at first. Left-hander delivers, and it's a fastball for a strike. Bob Miller was a first-round draft choice by the New York Mets in the expansion a few years back as the pitching coach on this club. Here's the one-strike delivery. Goes after a breaking pitch and fouls it off and is in the hole 0-2. Well, Roy Hartsfield, the Blue Jay manager, looking to go with youth on this club, also speed. He's a gambling type of manager, and he figures with good pitching and speed and this artificial surface, he's going to win some ball games. Exhibition Stadium is the proper name for this ballpark. Here's a fastball low, just missed in the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Outfield playing the batter around to the left. Left-hander ready. Here's the one-two pitch inside a ball. Now the announcers for Toronto, young man by the name of Tom Cheek. And the color announcer, one of Chicago's all-time favorite athletes, early win. He only won his 300th game when he was pitching for Chicago, didn't he? Uh, I'm not sure that it was with the White Sox. Yeah, I think he was 43. Yeah, it took him a long time to get that 300. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. As Brett goes into the windup and delivers a swing and a miss, he struck him out. So Ken Brett strikes out the first man that he faces, and there's one out in the first inning. Bob Lemon was telling me, he told Wynn, why don't you quit? Not too many guys have 299 wins. <laughs> That's right. You know, Brett really threw a good breaking ball, one of the better breaking balls we've seen in the all spring. Hector Torres. Torres came 
came over here for Lowenstein, didn't he? Yeah, from uh, Cleveland. Well, he went to San Diego, then to Cleveland, then for Lowenstein. He hit 195 at San Diego last year. Looks at the first pitch for a ball. Four homers, 15 RBIs, and a called strike in the outside corner. The snow has stopped, hopefully for good, this winter in Toronto. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Here's a swing and a foul going back into the seat. We have a break. The wind isn't blowing at all. It's been very still now, or it's blowing out because we aren't feeling it. It's very difficult to tell here about the wind. Oh, oh now I see a <laughs> small flag to our right. But the uh, national banners for these two countries are out in center field. Here's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Ken Brett has struck out the first two men that he has faced. And the batter is dug off. And Jimmy will tell you about him in a moment. At Sacramento last year, he hit 313, 25 homers and 83 RBIs. Went up to the Texas Rangers at 300, and I was totally impressed with the young man, Jimmy. He's a self-made young man. By that, he didn't have too much ability. He weighed about 30 pounds more than he does now when he was in A ball. And just worked so hard with desire. Doesn't run too well, but here he is in the big leagues because he, he can hit the ball. Here's the first pitch to him, and it's way outside of ball. One of the problems he had is the fact that Mike Hargrove, a rookie of the year of a couple of years ago, was at first base. Be a little better defensively at first, you think, than hard I would say so, yes. A lot better. Left-hander ready. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball for a strike. Good curveball. And there's even up 1-1. One one. Wondering if the fans, the pressure gets to these fellas that haven't been in the big leagues at all. With this excitement and all this will make them swing at bad pitches. Left-hander ready. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Here's a swing and a long drive. This ball's going to be out of here. Washington, 
But Lee McPhail and the other American League owners said, no, we're going to Toronto, whether you like it or not. They had to get another team with Seattle to avoid that lawsuit. So here they are. Chet Lemon will lead it off here in the second inning for the White Sox. White Sox out in front, 2-1. to one. The first pitch by Singer is a fastball. White Sox with two runs on two hits. The Blue Jays, one run on one hit. We've already had two home runs. Here's a swing and a grounder to Garcia at second. He's got it. Throws over to first in time, and Lemon's retired. Well, there's one out, and Brian Downey in the batter. He failed to tell you that during the spring, Lemon hit 281 with a homer and seven RBIs. Brian Downing had a pretty good spring at the plate. Brian, Brian hit 346 with a homer and eight RBIs. Last night, the American League season opened up at Seattle. Here's the first pitch of fastball high, ball one. Frank Tanana shut out Seattle on nine hits, seven to nothing. Right-hander goes into the windup. Here's the 1-0 pitch, a swing and a miss. They reported the crowd at 57,732, 57,732. I know in the Washington paper this morning when I was coming in from after doing the Bulls-Bullets game last night from Washington, here's a pitch, here's a swing and a foul. They reported, and apparently they did here too on a wire service story, that that was the biggest home opener uh, in the history of the American League. But Jack Rohammer mentioned to me that uh, Cleveland against the Tigers had around 73,000 just a few years ago and wanted me to pass that on and set the record straight. He said he knew it because he played in the ball game. A ball and two strikes to Downing. Nobody on, one out. Outfield playing him around the hair to the left. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Up high a ball. Evens the count two and two. Outstanding crowd on hand considering the weather conditions. They sold 44,000 tickets, and I think they're all here. Right-hander ready, the 2-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a pop-up to the left side, carrying on into the seat. And we still wait for the first man to catch it on the fly. <laughs> Nobody wants to grab that ball. It is cold. And there's going to be hockey here tonight. They run out and see the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Pittsburgh Penguins in the second game of their first round series for the Stanley Cup. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a foul. Straight back, and the count remains the same. This is the first round of playoffs in the Stanley Cup. Dan Hozak, our engineer, also handles the controls for Jimmy West and Lou Angotti on the Blackhawk games here on MAQ. Here's a half swing and a looper behind the mound. Shortstop charges, throws, not in time. A half swing by Downey that just got over the head of the pitcher. The shortstop, Torres, came in, threw but too late, and Downing is on with an infield hit. But Dan Hozak uh, handles the engineering on the Chicago Blackhawk broadcast. Jimmy West, Lou Angotti, and they were telling Jimmy or Dan when they came through Toronto last time, there was no way the White Sox in Toronto were going to play baseball here today. That was about a month and a half ago they predicted that. So the Ontarians and the Blackhawks were wrong. There is baseball here in Toronto. The batter, Ralph Gar, tossed over to first and Downing dives back in. Gar walked his first time up and came around to score the first White Sox run of the ball game. He stole second, went to third on an air and came home on Ortiz fly ball. Here's the pitch outside of all. Just this to the corner. Lester Shylak calling balls and strikes. Joe Brinkman down at first, Rich Garcia at second, and Steve Palermo working third. Here's a toss to first, and the runner back. On our ticker, instead of baseball scores, we're getting stock market reports. So we can't tell you what's going on elsewhere in baseball today. The Cubs are opening up at home against the Mets. Seaver against Burris. St. Louis is at Pittsburgh this afternoon, and San Francisco's at Los Angeles. Three games in the National League. Right-hander ready, runner off the bag at first. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Outside of all, 2-0. In the American League, Kansas City is at Detroit. Spidorf going against Roberts. Texas is at Baltimore. Bly Levin is going against Palmer. And you realize in that game at Baltimore, it'll mark the first time in 21 years that Brooks Robinson is not starting at third base. Just amazing that you've been around 21 years. Doesn't seem that long. Here's the next pitch and a called strike as guard takes on a 2-0 pitch. 
Milwaukee's at New York, Travers against Hunter, Cleveland's at Boston, Eckersley against Jenkins, and tonight, California at Seattle again, Ryan going against Romo. Here's the 2-1 delivery way outside of all, 3-1. Alan Bannister in the on-deck circle, and the snow flurries have resumed. Three balls and a strike. Singer tosses over to first, downing back in time. Two to one, the White Sox are out in front if you just joined us. As you've been with us all the way, they're still out in front, two to one. Right-hander tosses again over to first, and downing dives back again. Well, the White Sox will be home on Tuesday. Special festivities dedicated to the memory of the late Mayor Richard Daly. And a tall white cigar right across the letters. Fly was ready to go down to first base, and the count is full three and two. Game time opening day, 1.15 against the Red Sox. Pre-game festivities starting at 12.45. And the first 10,000 fans will receive a replica baseball made out of styrofoam. Here's a toss over to first, and Downey just got back in time that Brian would be off on the 3-2 pitch. Singer went over there again for about the fifth time. Right-hander ready. Another toss to first. He's back again. So the first 10,000, along with the Daly family, will have an opportunity to throw out the first pitch on opening day against the Boston Red Sox. Here's a swing and a grounder to the third base from McKay. Can't go to second. Throws the first in the third. Gets away. Brian Downing will go to third. And the White Sox have runners at first and third. Downing was off to the pitch. McKay had no chance to get him at second. Through low to Doug Hall at first. It got beyond him. Not far enough to allow Gar to go, but enough to allow Brian Downing to scoot over to third. So that's the second error of the ball game against Toronto. Alan Bannister. And the batter is Alan Bannister, who flied out to right field his first time up. So the White Sox with a chance to add another run here. A runner at third and less than two outs. Only one. Right-hander working out of the stretch of the first pitch to Bannister is a fastball outside. Alan Bannister, a very happy young man. A number one draft choice twice in his career as a shortstop out of high school. He did not sign. Then he went to Arizona State and he was the number one draft choice, but he's really never had the opportunity to play every day as a big league shortstop. And now that opportunity has been given to him. He has a little heat on his back due to the fact that Kevin Bell is working out at that position with the minor league club at Iowa. Right-hander ready. Here's the 1-0 pitchers. A swing and a shot. A base hit into left field. Alan Bannister drives home the third run as Downing crosses the plate, and Ralph Gar holds up at second. So Bannister, with his first RBI of the year, the air really set it up, because if not, if that not happened, Downing would have had it to hold it second, and I don't believe he would have been able to score on that base hit. And we're going to have activity in the Toronto bullpen again. So the White Sox back to their two-run lead at the 3-1 to one ball game. And George Horda, who drove in the run his first time up as the batter with a sacrifice fly back in the first inning. Infield, a double play depth. Right-hander delivers, and it's a breaking pitch for a strike in the outside corner. So the Red Sox will be in Chicago Tuesday and Wednesday. Singer bends down on his knees with his hands on his knees, getting the sign. Now he's ready. Here's the pitch. Fastball called strike two. Horda steps out of the box. Richie Ziff who pumped a home run into the center field seats. His first time up as a member of the White Sox awaits in the on-deck circle. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a pop-up coming off towards the stands. It'll be out of play and into the seats. And the count remains the same. No balls and two strikes. While these Toronto Blue Jays will be in Chicago next weekend. It'll be the first time that a Canadian baseball team has played at Comiskey Park. And in commemoration and a salute to Canada over those three days, many special events, including a free trip to Toronto for lucky fans and colorful ceremonies on the field. There's 
a swing and a miss. Marta just struck out. That's the first strikeout by Singer. And now there are two down, and Richie's just the batter. Also, when Toronto comes in on Friday night, medallions, a Canadian maple leaf will be given away. A maple leaf pin to the first 10,000 people through the turnstiles. Here's the pitch to this. Here's a swing and a drive down the left side. It is a fair ball. One man is around to score. Here comes another man to third, and he's going to be held up. And Richie Zip goes in with a run-producing double. Boy, I'll tell you, he doesn't waste any time. He went after that first pitch and doubled off the left field wall. And the White Sox are out in front 4-1. to one. Gar came home to score, and Bannister held up at third. So Zisk, two for two, and two RBIs. Number three, the first baseman, Jim Spencer. Jim Spencer, who singled up the middle his last time up as the batter. A base hit here could give the White Sox a couple more runs. Singer leans in and gets his sign. Jerry Johnson, a right-hander, continues to warm up in the Toronto bullpen. Right-hander delivers. Here's a pitch called strike. Singer was 2-1 against the White Sox a year ago. As I recall, he was a lot tougher than that against us. Four to 4-1, the White Sox out in front. Right-hander is ready. Here's the pitch. Low a ball. Evens the count up at 1-1. One one. Chris Knapp will be going for the White Sox out here Friday. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a foul. The mini Minoso in the coach's box at first. He bobbles it. Well, a year ago, the White Sox won their home opener 4 to nothing over Kansas City. Wilbur Wood was sensational. A six-hit shutout. And this man, Jim Spencer, was the offensive star. A two-run homer, a pair of singles, a walk, a sacrifice bunt, and three RBIs. Tell you about that opening day lineup a year ago and compare it to today. Here's the one-two pitch, a swing and a foul. Chet Lemon was in center field, he is today. Ralph Gar was in left field, he is today. George Orta was at third, he's at second today. Cleon Jones was the designated hitter, he's gone. Buddy Bradford was in right field, Buddy's playing in Japan now. Jim Spencer was at first, he still is. Bucky Dennett short, and Bucky's with the Yankees. Jack Brohammer was at second. Here's the one-two pitch, here's a swing and a one-hopper right back to the mound. Singer has it, throws to first, and the Blue Jays are out of the inning here in the second. In the second, the White Sox come up with two runs on three hits. One air and two men left down. The Sox have stranded four in the first two innings. We go to the bottom of the second. The White Sox four, the Blue Jays one. This is WMAQ Chicago. We're having cash call winners all over Chicagoland. We mean it. How do you make you come make me rich? Good morning. This is Lee Sherwood calling from WMAQ. And you've just won two brand new cars and three thousand dollars in cash. Congratulations. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Another cash call is coming soon. Another reason to answer wow, every phone call. Who am I talking to? WMAQ about? is gonna make me rich. Back in Toronto, Canada, as we go to the bottom of the second, Ken Brett with a three-run lead here will face the number five, six, and seven hitters for the Maple, for, I want to say the Maple Leafs, the Blue Jays, Gary Wood, Steve Bowley, and Pete Garcia. We're talking about that opening lineup of a year ago opposed to today. Bucky Dent, as we mentioned, was at short, and Bucky's now with the Yankees. Jack Brohammer was at second. Jack is still with the ball club, but not in the starting lineup. And Pete Barney did the catching. Pete now with the Atlanta Braves AAA Farm Club. 
Now most of the snow has gone off the field. The little bit of a breeze that we've had has blown it off, but yet there's still some flurries here in Toronto. Gary Woods leads it off. He played at Tucson last year, the Oakland Athletics AAA Club, where he hit 308, eight homers and 67 RBIs. Brings and fouls one down the right side. One strike in the batter. Woods a good-looking prospect. Left-hander ready. Here's the one-strike pitch outside of all. Sox with two runs in the first and two in the second here on a very chilly afternoon in Toronto, Canada. Here's the 1-1 pitch outside ball two. They got two Woods on this team, Gary Woods and Al Woods. Gary, who's batting now, came up with Oakland, played in six games last year, hit 125. Here's the 2-1 pitch, punch to the right side. Red off the mound. Spencer has it, dives and misses him, a base hit. Spencer jumped in front of Brett, fought the ball and dove trying to get Woods. And he just missed him, and it's an infield hit. So a runner at first and nobody out, and Steve Bowling, the batter, played at Spokane last year for the Milwaukee Braves organization. Steve Bowling. Hit 266, 16 homers and 92 RBIs. A lot of these kids have very impressive statistics out of the Pacific Coast League, which is not considered a hitter's league. Brett out of the stretch for the first time today. Here's a swing and a foul. Oh, that's got a sting as it went off of him here in this cold weather. Bowling was Spokane's most valuable player last year out of Tulsa University. Played in 14 games for the Milwaukee Brewers at 167. Outfielder plays the right-handed hitter around to the left. Big gap in right center. We've had two home runs today. Richie Zisk and Doug Alt. And a breaking pitch for a strike. Good curveball. Bowling in the hole 0-2. Pedro Garcia in the on-deck circle. Ken Brett ready. Here's the two-strike delivery. A swing and a foul into the seats. Well, I tell you, they don't have a screen around the ballpark. They have one directly behind home plate. And those balls whistle into the seats here. partner Harry Carey will be coming along in a moment. Here's the two-strike pitch missed with a breaking ball. Ball one, I'm sure, is very pleased to be doing this game today and thus holds the distinction of being the only announcer, whether it be American or Canadian, to announce two openers in Canada for Major League Baseball. Here's a pitch low of all. Harry was announcing for the St. Louis Cardinals, and they opened up the National League's entrance into Canada against the Montreal Expos a few years ago. And now is a White Sox announcer announcing the first American League game in Canada here today with the White Sox against the Blue Jays. Left-hander ready. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul. I guess Dick Dozer, the Tribune, is covering his third expansion opener. Covered the Cubs at Houston a few years ago. The White Sox against the Seattle Pilots. And the White Sox here today. Dozer covering for the Tribune. Joe got it with the Sun-Times. And Phil Hirsch, a newcomer to Chicago, covering for the Chicago Daily News. 2-2 pitch up high a ball. So the count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Nobody out, a runner at first. This man gets on. It brings up the tying run here in the bottom of the second. I tell you, we've got some heating elements up on our, on our ceiling. Here's a pitch is bat and back to the screen. The runner was off and the count remains at 3-2, and two, but I'm not feeling any of that heat. I don't know about Dan Hozak. No, he's not either. A beautiful day for football. Three balls and two strikes. Still getting the stock market on the ticker. No other baseball to report how it's because of it. Brett Ruddy, runner takes his lead. Here's a toss over to first, the runner back in time. Spencer was playing behind the runner. And then came back, but Gary Woods was not to be fooled. Flurries begin again. There he goes, the 3-2 pitch, swing and a miss, throw to second. He is safe. A good throw by Downing, but Woods got such a good jump that he slid in there safely for the first Toronto stolen base. 
the third strikeout by Brett. He began the ball game by striking out the first two batters, John Scott and Hector Torres. But then Doug Alt put one into the left center field seats, which made it a two-to-one ball game at that time. Right now it's four-to-one White Sox as Pedro Garcia, who played with Milwaukee and the Tigers last year, steps up. Here's a swing and a drive in the right field. This coming over, has to play it on a hop. Here comes the runner around third. Here's the throw. goes after the first pitch and singles home. Gary Woodson, it's a four to two ball game. Garcia had only 29 RBIs last year with Milwaukee and Detroit. He picks up his first of the year here this afternoon. So one out of runner at first and Dave McKay, who played with the Minnesota Twins for a while last year before getting sent down. The Sacramento of the Pacific Coast League is the batter. Hit 203 with eight RBIs at Minnesota. I believe that he is the first Canadian. Here's a swing and a grounder on the right side of base hit. Here goes the runner at second holding up. And Toronto collects their third hit of the inning and their fourth of the ball game. McKay, a right-handed hitter, Arda was pulled around. Spencer holding the runner at first. Plus a big hole on the right side of the infield, and he singled through. But I think every Canadian who has ever played Major League Baseball has been a pitcher. And I think Dave McKay is the only one who hasn't been a pitcher. He's from Vancouver. Second holding up. And Toronto collects their third hit of the inning and their fourth of the ball game. McKay, a right-handed hitter. Order was pulled around. Spencer holding the runner at first. Thus a big hole on the right side of the infield and he singled through. But I think every Canadian who has ever played Major League Baseball has been a pitcher. And I think Dave McKay is the only one who hasn't been a pitcher. He's from Vancouver, Canada and played at Creighton University in Omaha. Now Ken Brett has gone to the White Sox dugout and then he wanted a new glove. He got it. And he goes back to the mound. So the Blue Jays have come up with three singles here in the second inning. And it's a four to two ball game. And the catcher, Rick Sarone. Rick Sarone out of the Cleveland organization. The catcher is the batter. Sarone hit 254 with 11 homers and 49 RBIs at Toledo of the International League last year and made the International League All-Star team. Right-handed hitter. He and Alan Ashby, also out of Cleveland, handling the catching chores and a good curveball for a strike. Brett looks in, gets his sign from Downing. The tying runs on base. Here's a swing and a shot grabbed by Bannister. Throw over to second. He got him. Bannister with a great play to his right, got that on one quick hop through to Horta to get Dave McKay. Outstanding play by Alan Bannister, his first chance this afternoon. Well, that saved the base hit of the run. The fans doing the decision here. They weren't too happy with it. They thought that McKay had gotten in there in time. Garcia, umpiring at second, thought different. On the play, Pedro Garcia goes to third, so there are runners. At the first field third, and John Scott, who struck out his first time up as the batter. Let's try to get out of a jam here. ball game with tying runs are on. Left-hander delivers. Here's a swing and a one-hopper back to the mound. Brett goes to both knees, flips over to Jim Spencer, and that retires the side. So in the second, Toronto comes up with one run on three hits. There were no errors, and two men left on. With the end of two complete innings of play, the Chicago White Sox four, Toronto Blue Jays two. Turn your Easter dinner into
to a memorable event with fine foods from Jewel. Start with a favorite from the butcher shop. Through Saturday, delicious smoked ham shank portion, 7 to 9 pounds, is just 69 cents a pound. Ham rump portion, 6 to 8 pounds, is just 79 cents a pound. And add freshness to your Easter menu with farm stand Idaho potatoes. The 10-pound bag is just 99 cents. Through Saturday at Jewel.
Bowling, who played center field most of the spring, but they made the change, and he's playing right field. Big hole between first and second is all. Holds against the runners, Tyler Holmes. At the belt now, there's the pitch one on. Hit over third base, foul. Just foul. Just foul. As Lamb on the umpire waves the signal foul. So Lemon, getting a slider away from him, flips it and puts it over the bag with just foul. And now Singer holding his right hand under his armpit. It's really cold. It's amazing that these pitchers can pitch at all. When they're sitting on the bench, they've got hot water bottles and heavy jackets on and towels around their neck. One ball and two strikes. One out. Top of the third inning. White Sox leading four to two. Now Singer waves again. Go over the signs again. He's not ready. Jerome is behind the plate. Gives him a sign. There's a pitch swing on a bad ball. That might have chased and he's out of the strike. So Gamble and Seth Lemon go down swing in. Both left bad pitches. Hit when he tried to get away from a pitch, he went over the pitcher's head for a little loop single in the infield. First pitch and singer swung on him. Boy, that was a pitch up in his eye that he just called back. Flag blowing towards left now. Awfully cold in his announcing booth. Got my gloves on, my winter underwear. One strike on Brian Downing. Doing a fine job behind the plate now. Singer looks over at first. There's a pitch inside. One ball and one strike. Big hole between first and second. Downing batted 346 this spring. Had one home run and eight RBIs. They call him the real hard swinger. He really swings from downtown. Singer looks over at first and delivers a high breaking ball. Two balls and a strike. Got two outs. White Sox with two in the first and two in the second. Two James got their first turn on a home run by Doug Hall at the first baseman. Did it over everything in left center field. 30 down each line, 375 to left center at 400. Here's a pitch in the dirt, and Thoreau makes a good play. This young man has got a good glove. Up fire saying a few words out there now to Singer. You've got to be very careful when you start stepping around that rubber and then fix your shoes. Those cleats keep getting filled. Third base McKay, deep at third. Singer at the belt, looks over at first base. Here's a Chris Swan, a high ground ball between short and third for a base hit. So down he gets a high pitch and just rips it in the left field for a base hit. Second hit of the inning. White Sox have been on first and second now with two outs. Still bring it to play Ralph Carr. Carr walked his first time up. Stole second and scored. He got out of there. From the first base and threw the ball into the dirt. And the catcher now out talking to Singer. And he's on his one knee right now really trying to clean his sleep. Every time they get a base hit, he cleans them twice as much. I don't think he's throwing well at all as the blooper now starts warming up. He, if God could get a base hit right now, I, I would say it would be all for him. They've been up about three different times. And now the rain really coming hard towards the left field side. Some of these players will really have their trouble getting their footing as you can see the rain coming in the boots. There's no wind here now. They just stick to the foot spot. There's the first pitch. One on the guard. He's on a third base line slow. Here's McCain. He's up with it. He fires over the first. He doesn't get it.
they made a change from right field to center field with him when they found that bowling couldn't do the job and they put bowling in right field. Brett working quick. Played the ground ball out towards second base. Orders up with it. Puts it over to second base. For out number two. Brett getting behind on the hitters. And I thought that uh, Paul hit a real good pitch, didn't you? Yeah, I did too. And uh, I was hoping that it would have curved foul, but he hit it so well that it didn't have time. Just like this double. You hope, let's, but this field seems shorter than 330. I'd like to measure it. <laughs> now the hitter is Steve Bowling. Falls off the first flip pitch and goes behind the plate. Strike Harry Paul with all was up the first time. I mentioned a little bit I saw him last year. I was impressed. I'm more so today. Well, Brett's got four strikeouts. The one strike pitch. Well, that's got to wait for everybody like he crossed downing up. I didn't quite get whether that was a strike or not, but i got to believe it was a ball outside. One ball and one strike as it goes up on the scoreboard. There are two outs. As now Brett looks at his outfielders and there's a big hole in right center field. The 1-1 one -one delivery. That ball in the dirt. Gets away from Downey. He picks it up and rubs it up. So now, the White Sox, after getting some runs, they find themselves all even. Four to four. Infield with this aperture playing deep. Balls and one strike. There's two outs. The Toronto Blue Jays, the first game for them in Major League Baseball. Fastball outside. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. On deck, Garcia. You know, you look at a guy like this bowling, he looks like he could hit one out. Hit the fastball, swung on. And the scoreboard was wrong, I was wrong. Now three and two. Left-handed delivery, fastball, hit out towards shortstop. Anderson on a one-hop fires over to first base, draw number three. But not before the Blue Jays get a couple of runs and the score after three points of play. With the White Sox four, the Blue Jays four. Imagine for a minute that you're standing next to a beautiful, gleaming 1977 Chevrolet Chevelle. Handsome, isn't it? Now, let's walk around it and see if you can guess its price. This Chevelle Malibu Coupe has a coach window and a warm coupe will fly. It has fiberglass radio tire. It has four coil suspension by the way. Small soft carpets, hidden windshield wipers, and dozens of other features to make it a very complete mid-size car. Now what do you think is the price of this Chevelle? It's not six thousand dollars, not five thousand, not even four thousand. It's three thousand eight hundred and eighty-five dollars. That's manufactured and just a retail price including dealer preparation. Price higher in California. Tax license, destination charge, and available equipment additional. Thirty-eight eighty-five. Beautiful price. Beautiful car. The smart, complete mid-size Chevrolet Chevelle. Canada as we go to the fourth inning. The White Sox, four runs on eight hits. The Blue Jays, four runs on six hits. And we've had three home runs today. Richie Zisk, a solo home run for the White Sox. And Doug Holt, a solo home run for Texas. I was rather his, his old club a year ago for Toronto and a two-run homer for Toronto. And now to step in and tell you about it here in the fourth inning, here's Harry Carey. All right, Lauren, thank you very much. Hello again, everybody. Well, it's a wild one, isn't it? I'm afraid of in this game, it looks like whoever that class is going to win, and we're at the class, they're the whole team. Both teams are going really. Boy, but for a sensational play by Alan Ballester in this ball game, might be already down the drain. Here we go to the top of the fourth inning. Here's George Order to lead it off. Roll. Pete Weber, formerly of Galesburg, Illinois, and South Bend, Indiana, here with now working for Buffalo, New York radio station, watching the game. Here's the pitch order, swings and misses. Top of the fourth with the score tied at four. Bill Singer's gone all the way against Ken Brett. Now the pitch is a wild one. Hey, almost hits Nestor Shylock behind the plate. Singer has been accused of throwing spitballs. And the way some of his balls are darting and dipping. And the way the snow has been coming down. Maybe he's throwing spitballs unintentionally. Two balls and a strike. 
Look, we said all along, there's no doubt that the White Sox are going to make runs. Whether the pitching and defense can hold the opposition is what it all comes down to. He's a good example, example Brett, your ace pitcher. You're giving four runs in the first two innings, yet you're only tied 4-4. Four, four. There's a pitch order swing, a high drive, twisting in the foul territory, and it's caught by Scott. The wind brought that ball right back to Scott, who thought it was going to go into the stand. One away. Here's Richie Zisk, who's homered and doubled, and his first two American League times it back. up the pitch. Here it is. There's a strike off. You know, after Doug Alt had hit his second home run of the game off Brett to tie up the ball game, he retired Valez, Woods, and Bowling in order and looked better than he had at any time previously. One strike and nothing. One out, nobody on. Ball game in the fourth. Which is this. Look out, nine inside. Many of the spectators have frozen in the leaving. There's a wild one. That hits the ground in front of the plate. Right hand hitter up there, Richie says. One out, nobody on. Board is wrong. It should be at least two balls. Now Singer gets set. Out of pitch wrong. Look at The scoreboard is incorrect. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Nobody on. The score tied. Now the Goes into the windup to delivery. Chicago. Harry Carey back in Toronto. Here's the pitch for Spencer. Swings and he misses. And even the count. Two balls, two strikes. Spencer going for the long one. Oscar Gamble will be up there next. Two men are out. Nobody on. The signal given. Now the pitch, here it is. There's the line shot to right field for a hit. Almost got over bowling head. So Spencer makes it two out of three with the line single to right. That's the ninth hit for the White Sox. Number 13, the designated hitter, Oscar Gamble. Here's Oscar Gamble looking for his first hit. He just joined the White Sox today after being acquired from the New York Yankees. The Blue Jays have a slogan in their dressing room that apparently comes from Ray Kroc, the owner of the San Diego Padres is here today. Ray Kroc being the founder of McDonald's and the Chicago. 
as a pitch, a strike call over the outside car. Press on, nothing in this world can take the place of resistance. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Here's a pitch, low outside. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination are omnipotent. Doc Ellis, the temperamental pitcher of the Yankees. Hot and bothered about their owner, George Steinbrenner. Whoa! Ball two. Two balls for the strike. He thinks that Billy Martin's going to be fired by Steinbrenner. And he thinks Steinbrenner, Steinbrenner interferes with the Yankees too much. Chicago land, we mean it. Uh, I'll be right here. 
you to make me rich. Good morning. This is Lee Sherwood calling from WMAQ. And you've just won two brand new cars and $3,000 in cash. Talking to him out there. We'll have a new 
pitcher coming in. Left-handed batter. 
used to be with the Texas Rangers. The pitch a little bit outside. He's with the Rangers and then the Yankees for the last three years. Has never hit more. Only had one year as high as 250. Mario's ready to pitch. Fastball over the low. Bug off. Who kept them in the ball game with two home runs. Coming with a man on to tie up the ball game in the third. He's on deck. Now the stretch. The pitch. Oh, three is high. And now the Blue Jays are in a spot to break the game wide open. They already have taken the lead five to four. Have runners at first and second. Left hand pitch hitter Jim Mason up there. Gets set. The pitch. Right down the middle, a good fastball for a strike call. Three balls and a strike. Runners at first and second, one away. Five to four, Toronto. Now to stretch the pitch. High, top foul, out of play. Into the stand. number of hands. Boy, they don't contest the souvenirs here. They don't fight for them like they do in other places. Three balls, two strikes. I guess that Canadian hospitality. I see if the runners will be going on the three-two pitch. Now the stretch. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think so, too. Oh, we might be a little bit too far back. Nice ballpark. They've done a good job here. They can do something about the weather now. <laughs> this is the kind of weather we opened in last year in Chicago. 3-2 pitch. Fouled it back. He hung that breaking ball. And Lemon had a good cut. But didn't get it. Just fouled it. Just fouled it back. Lemon trying to get on to start this fifth inning. White Sox trail by runs. Who's going to get some runs? Because I don't think Barrios is doing too good. 5-4 in favor of the play of Blue Jays. Bill Singer gets set. Veteran 33-year-old right-hander. Lemon digging in. Three balls, two strikes, a pitch. Briggs, and he lines it foul. Into the right field stands. Oh, well, he's hanging in there tough. A lot of the spectators have left. They don't sell beer here, and they've gone to the corner saloon to get warm. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Gar 
the dugout, and Charlie Sad, the White Sox trainer, I guess just getting the mud out of his bag. Uh, Downing is at second base. Gar will be at first. You know, this Jerry Johnson uh, has really been around. He was a third baseman originally. You know that he pitched in the big leagues and almost 10 years ago with the Phillies. He's modeled a few uniforms. Salinas, Auburn, Williamsport, Greenville, Jacksonville, San Diego, Philadelphia, Tulsa, St. Louis, San Francisco, Cleveland, Denver, Houston, Hawaii, San Diego. I couldn't read all that. I, I, you, you do that well. I just feel I give him a little bit because he has got the longest record of any pitcher down there. <laughs> Last year with San Diego, he, as Jimmy told you, he had a high earned run average, and he'll be coming in here to face Bannister. We're driving around with a base in the second. A sinker ball pitcher has a tough time on his after turf. As he throws it down, he wants it to be hit on the ground, and he hit it, and it goes quickly and shoots through there, especially today. You know, just to show you uh, the fallacy of judging on bases of uh, batting average. Now, Bannister has one hit today, driving in a run. He has saved at least five runs, maybe who knows how many. Who knows how far the inning would have gone had he not come up with a spectacular play. So with two defensive plays, he's accounted for more runs than most sluggers drive in on a good day. And he's going to get better, they tell me, and he's got a... You know, I don't know how good he was, because he doesn't look too strong, but he certainly is, is making the plays, and he, he swings that bat fairly good. Well, here's the pitch by Jerry Johnson, and it's a little bit inside, ball one. One ball, those strike the order will be up there next. Jerry Johnson, a big right-hander, stands 6-2. He's got to keep out of a double play because we've got to get order up there. Order's up there next. Well, we got to get him up there. He's due for one. Now the stretch the pitch to Bannister. There's a line drive to the third baseman. No chance to get the double play. Downing played a smart, and so did Gar. Waiting to see the ball go through first. Bannister hit a rope, but right at McKay. So that's two gone. And here's Orca. He drove in the first run for the White Sox to the sacrifice fly. He's nothing out of two officially. He struck out and he fouled out. Left hand batter digging in. Oh, for a long one here. We're in the fifth. Five to four in favor of Toronto. I'll take a blueberry. Anything. I'll take anything. Zip, do next. The clouds are coming in again. Now to stretch the pitch. Curve of beauty. Overhanded curveball right in there. I wish I was hidden on that curveball. Like he was just going to take a pitch to see what Johnson throws. One strike and nothing. Runners at first and second. The right hander gets set. From the belt. The pitch. Oh, then he fouled it back and that's that low fastball. And over there, usually, that's what he hits his home runs with. Sometimes the hitter hasn't seen a pitcher in a long time. It takes him a while to adjust it. So the pitcher has got the advantage. Two strikes or nothing. Jerry Johnson in relief. Waiting now. From the belt, the pitch. Low. Two strikes and a ball. Horton are trying to get hold of one here. Off the first baseman playing very deep. Second baseman's on right field. Now the stretch, the pitch. A little tap. He was really cool on the curveball, and he barely kicked the ball. He's given good motion. I mean, he's really reaching back and then throwing up a real slow curveball. Hello. So, horses in the hole. Two strikes and the ball. Left hand batter waiting. At the belt for delivery. Here it is. Fast, but right to the first base.
rich lemon filling topped with lemon streusel and a perfect flaky crust. The flavor's frozen in, so all you do is bake. Lloyd J. Harris Lemon Crunch Pie. Lloyd J. Harris, water pie, water pie. Play. One out. 
the hitter wasn't giving himself up. He was running for a base hit. That's why the runner was not running. And Downing had gone out to the mound just before the pitch and said something to the Barrios to be alive for something. And that helped him. Holler, too. I'll bet he hollered at him when he controlled. I think we're going to have a pitch hitter here. Alwood, a left-handed batter, is going to bat for Steve Bowling. Alwood's no relation to Gary Wood. coming out. Albus Wood from Oakland, California. He was acquired from Minnesota in the expansion draft in the second round. You've got me. At the Kome in 284 last year. He's only 23 years old, left-hand batter. Al Wood. the belt the pitch. High fastball ball. One ball, no strikes. Barrios sitting in the role of the early relief man. He replaced Ken Brett in the fourth. One ball, no strikes. Not a signal given. There's a fastball for a strike call. Alvis Woods is the left-hand hitter. Gary Woods is the right-hand batter. One out, a ball of a strike to count. The pitch. Twelve and a high pop foul out of play. Over the stand. He's in the hole, strike two. I can't get over the genteel manner in which they go after a foul ball on the stand. Very polite, very courteous. No piling up, scuffling. Unusual. They haven't used the ball enough. <laughs> Two strikes on the ball. Now the sign given. The pitch. High pop foul coming back into the stand. Out of play. Two strikes on the ball. Five to four in favor of Toronto. They have a runner in second with one away. Two strikes on the ball to count. The field was covered by snow when we started today. Now the signal. The snow has stopped. Two strikes and a ball to pitch. Long drive way back. Might be out of here. It could be. It is. A home run. A fastball right down the middle. And Elvis Woods hit it a mile.
can throw the fastball by him maybe for one time around, but after that, he's in trouble. It's awfully hard, as I say, Harry, many times. You can't learn it in the big. You break people's hearts. Two strikes or nothing. Fastball, low and outside. So, uh, Toronto scored five off Brett, two already off Barrios. Two strikes and a ball to pitch. Left-handed against Barrios. 2-2 two, pitch two swung off. Ground ball. Up with an order. Throws the first to the out. That retires the side. But two big runs. Two hits. Four. Nobody left. At the end of five, Toronto seven. The White Sox four. Two balls and a strike. Oh, 
for a good inning. White Sox have had 12 hits, but are losing 7-4. to four. Timely home runs by the Blue Jays. There's a half swing, and he fouled it out of play. The count even, two balls, two strikes. We're in the sixth. Getting right along. Plenty of time to make, make some runs. Even up, two balls, two strikes. Gamble will be up there next. Now Jerry Johnson is ready. From the belt. Here's the pitch. Stops him out. And he has faced the bad ball. That was that screwball to the left-hand batter. Dipping down and away. And here's Gamble. What gone. We're in the six. I think Gamble came here to walk. He <laughs> <laughs> out the other time. We want to be here. We want runs. We want runs. Oh, this is this has the stretch the bit. Way! And he fouls it off. Gamble has it all. One good swing. Looks like he's running away from every pitch. He probably hasn't hit much this spring. Runner first one out. Shot home would be up the next. Get hold of one. Now the stretch, the hesitation, the pitch, high. That evens it up a ball and a strike. Off day tomorrow. Be with you at 12:15 Saturday afternoon and again Sunday. The fans wonder what kind of a pitcher's pitch. He's like Stu Miller. He don't throw very hard. There's a curveball high. Two balls and a strike. Oh, he's got. All he looks like he's got out there is a prayer. Gee, that screwball is a dead pitch. To the strike. Jerry Johnson has his signal. The pitch. Good fastball. A strike is called. He pulled him that time after throwing all that jump. His fastball looked like a Bob Miller pitch. But it ain't. He didn't even pop the catcher's glove. 2 2 pitch. Outside, ball three. Come on, this is an important man to get on base. The tying run would be at the plate. Two strikes. Let's see what Zisk is going to do. The White Sox are three runs behind. Zisk takes a long lead off first. The stretch. There's the pitch. He holds. Swung and he fouled it out of play. Three balls, two strikes. Maybe you gamble there. Maybe hit a homer off of this guy. you got to use your own power because he's really changing speed. 35 years old. Jerry Johnson. Two strikes. Gamble waiting. Now the pitch. Here it is. Swings and he fouls it back. He had a good rip that time, boy. He was guessing fastball. He got fastball and he had a good cut. Just didn't get it. He fouled it back. Full count. Zisk has been holding because they're three runs behind. Why risk running into an out? Three balls. Two strikes. Out the stretch. The pitch.
Brent Lemon would be up there next. Let's see if Tyler Holm is hitting. Runners at first and second. The 3 1 delivery. Here it is. He is hitting. A looper in the center field going to drop base hit. Here's a runner on third base on to score. They're not even going to play for him. The throw comes back into the infield. Tyler Holm loops a single to center. Scoring this. Gamble stopped at second. And now it's 7 to 5. And still counting. Toronto. Pitcher on the club, and he's a relief pitcher. Who falls here for state identification? Harry Carey with Jimmy Pierce off. What is the first and second to run in? Here's a curveball low at 11. Pete Bukovic, used to be with the White Sox, the right-hander. Starting to warm up for the Toronto Blue Jays. Manager Roy Hutchfield comes out to stall a little bit because this has happened in a hurry to give Bukovic a chance to get ready. Talking with Hutchfield, he said with Bukovic, it's new for him that he's warming up in the bullpen will take a lot longer than a guy like Johnson who's used to it or a guy like Wills that they have. So he's out there delaying a little bit right now. All right, he walks back off the field now. Trotted into the dugout. Comes back out to first base. It's seven to five. Oh, for a long run. Chet Lemon struck out in the fifth. Struck out in the third. Rolled out in the second. He's due. Right-handed batter. Now the stretch by Jerry Johnson. The pitch. Flash ball inside. Low ball one. And Jerry Johnson is just missing now. Two hits and a walk this inning have accounted for a run. Lemon waiting. Now the pitch here it is. Strong and he found it back and he really had a good rip. And that evens it up on a ball and a strike. Lemon letting the pitch get even with the plate before he swings. He's got to hit that ball more out in front because he's getting good cuts with the ball and by him. All right, Johnson off the stretch. Gamble is safe lead at second base. The pitch. Low. The board says ball three. I think it should be ball two. The board keeps you guessing. It has, it's a temporary board. It's rather imperfect. Now the stretch from the belt. The pitch. Low walk and ball four. So the base is loaded. Only one out and Brad Downey, who's three out of three today. What a spot to make it a perfect game. The bases are loaded. Jerry Johnson on the hill. Pete Bukovic warming up. I hope we have about five before he gets ready. <laughs> okay, Downey. Gets the ball all over. Infield's going to play back for the double play. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle of fastball. He hadn't seen Jerry Johnson, so he wanted to look at a pitch. Now he's in the hole. One strike and nothing. A base hit with Tyatt. Now to wind up the pitch, here it is. Curve a little bit outside. Boy, the way he throws, he could handle it. And Downing could hit it right out of here. And Downing, a high ball hitter, has hit three shots on high ball today. Her ball and a strike. The wind up the pitch, here it is. Please, and he fouls it back, and he really had a rip. man and he really whacked at it but fouled it back. Two strikes in the ball. Seven to five in favor of Toronto. Do have a time for the six? Right hand hitter digging in. Be ready up there. Infield playing back. Now to wind up the pitch. Here it is. He didn't mean to swing. He fouled it back and I'm glad he touched it because he could have been called out on strikes on that pitch. he could get the fastball by him. He generally picks away with two strikes to get you in a hole. He'll keep trying that ball outside to make it chase a bad ball. Now Jerry Johnson ready. Into the windup, the pitch. Here it is. Oh, popped it up on the infield. Foul territory. That'll be an easy out. The cave, the third base. Anything but that. But here's Ralph Gar. Bases loaded, two outs. 
fucked up. You know, when you make $100,000, you got to hit in this situation. <laughs> you don't drive this many, too many rounds. got to do it. i got to get to do it right now. Position. Mason walked as a pinch hitter in the fourth. 
This is Harry Carey. Going to move back over to the television booth. Jimmy Pearsall and Lauren will be with you. The score here at the end of six remains Toronto 7, the White Sox 5. Jimmy Pearsall with Harry Carey and Lauren Brown back in Toronto with the score 7 to 5. The Blue Jays leading in the top of the seven. The White Sox with a chance to try to score at the base of the loaded. Gar hit a shot right back at the pitcher. He didn't even know he had it. He put his glove down and there it was. And the White Sox are out of the inning. Right now, though, so Alan Bannister will go to the plate. He's got one hit. He drove in and run in the second inning. He's one for four. Bannister playing a sensational shortstop, making two great plays, turning one into a double play to get us out of a jam. Jerry Johnson delivers. Fastball, strike one. McKay at third. Mason playing short in place of Torrey's. Dugoff, young man with two home runs, playing first base. One strike pitch. Ball, one ball and one strike. Top of the seventh inning. White Sox with 13 hits. They've left 15 men on base. Haven't made an error. The 1-1 delivery, breaking ball, T. Reich, and a real slow curveball like a blooper pitch. Johnson, a veteran, been around a long time, played in the big leagues for about nine years before he went back to the minors. Came up to San Diego towards the end of the season. The 1-2 pitch, breaking ball outside. Coaching at third base, Bobby Knopf. White Sox wanting to start something right now to get back in this ball game. They scored two in the first and two in the second, one in the sixth. They need two to tie it. The 2-2 pitch, swung on a fly ball to center field. Center field Woods back. He stands and now takes it in his track. The outfield and the infield now has dried up somewhat. They've had a lot of snow here today for a baseball game, and prior to game time, they were having quite a bit of difficulty getting the infield all around home plate. First base dried out. Porter stepped in. Is over four. Got a great spring, and the first pitch is outside ball one. Seventh inning on deck. Richie Disk. Another pitch going on a foul off to the left side. A line drive in the stands. The stands here are not covered along the first base line and third base line, but out in left field, they must have had a track here at one time or something because it certainly looks like a, a horse race stable out here. To swing on. No, he takes it. Two balls and one strike. George Orta looking for his first base hit of the year. Garcia deep at second base. Outside. Three balls and one strike. You can play real deep on this artificial turf because the ball will scoop. Most instruments with a great arm play awfully deep. Now, Who's back a few steps to first base. The 3-1 pitch from Johnson. Ball four. And Orta's on now with one out with base on ball. Richie Disk, who hit a home run first time at bat in the American League. He hit a dead center field over the corner and put side over both sides. Then he doubled a line drive off the left field wall for an RBI. Struck out in the fourth. And they got a base hit in the sixth and scored a run. Sis, down at the end of the bat. Johnson at the stretch. Had the ground ball between third. That ball wasn't hit too good, but it got right in the hole for a base hit. So this, having four hits to start things off for him in the American League. Jim Spencer. Spencer single in the first. It's back to the pitcher. Single to center field in the fourth and walked. So he's two for three. Did a long drive foul his last time up with a couple of men on base on the right field line. See Ham Hamilton warming up. Left-hander. The blow is sits down now. Number three, the first baseman, Jim Spencer. That's the Shylock behind the plate. Tyrone, a young catcher, having a good day, both defensively and offensively. Got a couple of base hits. Jerry Johnson, giving up a run in two innings and four hits with their lead. Johnson looks back at second base and fires the fastball outside. As Vukovic warms up in the bullpen. Spencer steps out. On deck, Oscar Gamble. Johnson shakes off one sign. 
The right-hander, six feet one. He got the belt. Now he delivers. That ball fouled off. Now it's going back in. First baseman's going to take it. The catcher's coming out. First baseman, nobody, t- nobody takes it. The ball is blown back by the dugout. The catcher was going over after it. The first baseman was coming in, and all of a sudden, nobody took it. The play where the first baseman has got to call the catcher off if he can get it. But he was playing so deep, he wasn't able to get close to it. So a break for Jim Spencer on a ball that should have been caught, and the count goes to one and one. There's one out. We're at the top of the seven. The score is seven to five. Blue Jays are winning. They scored in every inning except the sixth inning. They've got 12 hits, made a couple of errors. Order down at second. He's on a walk. Johnson shakes off the sign, looks back at Order. Here's a breaking ball. Hit back to the pitcher. He's up with it and fires over the first base and gets it. As Spencer fooled on a breaking ball, hits it off the end of the bat. Johnson off the mound, picks it up and fires the first as both runners move up. Oscar Gamble. Had an RBI the last time up. He walked in the first time up, struck out in the third, walked in the fourth. He's one for two now with an RBI. Gamble with great power. Hit 17 home runs last year for the Yankees. Hit right now, tie this ball game up. Garcia really deep at second base. You'll never see a second baseman any deeper. There's a pitch one up, off to the left side. Over comes McKay, over comes the shortstop. McKay's over and takes it for off number three. A beautiful catch by McKay. And the White Sox don't score. And the score after six and a half innings of play, the Blue Jays seven, the White Sox five. In the last three inches, this is WMAQ Chicago. With Harry Carey, Lauren Brown, and we're in the bottom of the seventh inning. The White Sox lost the chance to tie things up. Well, with men on second and third, Oscar Gamble popped up in foul territory. A nice catch by McKay, the third baseman. And Johnson, not throwing too hard for that ball club, certainly getting away with murder. If we can hold him right there, there's no doubt in my mind we could catch him because he can't fool a hitter that much. Steve Hamilton now is on relief. Barrios, number 20, the right fielder, Al Wood. Al Wood, right fielder. He had a home run, pitch hitting. Drove in a run. Last year he played with Tacoma. Hamilton takes his sign and fires a fastball right down the middle, strike one. Outfield, around towards right, big hole in left center field. Soderholm off the bag at third. Bannister playing a great shortstop, playing straight away. The one strike delivery, sidearm, curveball outside, ball one. One ball and a strike. Nobody out, bottom of seven. Blue Jays leading seven to five. Proud of about 35,000 on hand. There's another breaking ball misses. As Hamilton goes to his breaking stuff the last two pitches. Coaching at third base for the Blue Jays, Jackie Moore. At first base, Harry Warner. The 2-1 pitch. That ball calls strike. Gets the outside corner, and Wood doesn't like it. Two balls and two strikes. Lemon straight away in center. Lemon having a little difficulty playing the center field pasture out there. This day of overcast and snow and bad background. There's a pitch swung out. Hit off to the left side. Foul. It's 3.30 down the right field line. 3.75 to right center. 400 at the jet center. 375 to left center. Ball seemed to carry pretty good. Doug Alders hit a couple of home runs. Woods hit one. And so is Richie's hit. There's a fastball just misses as the count goes full to three and two. Three balls and two strikes. As Hamilton tries to peck at the corner as Welkovich is warming up in the bullpen for Toronto. The 3 2 pitch. See right three. He took it. And that'll bring up a guy who's been hitting pretty well, Pedro Garcia. Garcia with two hits in an RBI. Single in the second. Double in the eighth when Lemon couldn't see the ball and let it fall and it bounced high over his head. And Richie just had to feel it. The one pitch, swing on line drive, in the left center field for a base hit. Star over, picks it up. Three base hits for Pedro Garcia. Last year, couldn't get three hits in a month. He was with Milwaukee and Detroit. It's 217 and 198 for both ball clubs. Dave McKay.
Okay, a young favorite here. This young man is from Canada. He's come over from the Minnesota Twins. He played at Tacoma last year. Hit 268. Got a couple of base hits. He's two for three. At the belt now is Hamilton. Looks over at the runner at Garcia. Delivers ground ball off towards short. Bannister up with it. Fires over to Horta. Horta can't get it out of his glove. Kind of a slow roller off towards short. That Bannister field is perfectly flipped to Horta. But Horta not being able to get out of his glove. The double play wasn't completed. So it's the first fourth play. Six to four. Number nine. Six to roll. Got a couple of base hits. A double and a single. Training, he hit 45, but he's hitting about 800 against us right now. Hamilton shakes off a side from Downing. He looks over at first. Left hander delivers. Ground ball off towards short. Over goes Toronto. Fires over to second base for the out. So, Toronto, we finally get about easy, and they don't score. And at the end of seven innings of play, it's a Toronto Blue Jays seven, the White Sox five. I got it. My favorite twin tablet. <laughs> Everybody, Lauren Brown, back at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, and Pete Pukovic, a former White Sox hurler, is pitching for Toronto here on the eighth inning. Jerry Johnson won two in the third innings, allowed one run on three hits. He walked two, and he struck out one. The Delta White Sox will have an opportunity now to work against their former teammate. They'll have the bottom half of the order up. Number seven, eight, and nine hitters, Soderholm, Lemon, and Downey. So they are assured of getting the top of the order up. No later than the ninth inning. Are they? Number two, Sox has granted 16 men today. He's got to get some timely hits with men on base. That's what Toronto has done. They've clubbed three homers them with a man on, counting for five of their seven runs. A right-hander and a left-hander are up in the Toronto bullpen as Eric Soderholm leads it off. First pitch by Vukovic, a fastball for a strike. Soderholm is two for four today, a pair of singles and an RBI. Vuk in the lineup, delivers down low of all. White Sox lost two players in that expansion draft that I was really sad to see go. Bill Stein, who won two for four for Seattle last night with a pair of doubles in this fellow. Scotter home a swing and a miss. Vukovic had an ERA of 3.67 in spring training, 19 and two-third innings. He was 0-2 in the spring. Scotter home swings and misses. He struck him out with a breaking ball on the outside corner. So there's one out. The batter is Chet Lemon. He is grounded out, struck out twice, and walked. And a fastball low. We're in the eighth inning. It's getting late in Toronto and not any warmer. Vukovic ready. Here's the pitch. Called strike. Evens the count up at one and one. Well, I knew the minute Vukovic was up in the bullpen that it was him, even though it's a little distance away here. Here's a pitch inside. Almost hit him because Vuk works in a hurry. He gets that ball, and he wants to come right back at you. Doesn't give you a chance to set up. Lemon stayed out of the box for a bit now to slow him down. Here's the 2-1 delivery. Called strike in the outside corner, 2-2. Two two. two balls and two strikes. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a bouncer foul to Bobby Knopp in the coach's box at third. Boy, you really got to admire these Canadians. They have stuck it out most of the way. I'd say maybe now there are about 20,000 left. Some just left a bit ago, but up through the fifth inning, everybody was here that, that um, originally it looked like. Here's a swing and a foul. He really fooled him. And Lemon just got a piece of it. They never have given the, the attendance, have they, Danny? I haven't heard any given. 44,000, uh, it was a sellout before the game. Kansas City beat the Detroit Tigers 7-4 to today. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Tops it foul right back to the screen. Boston leads Cleveland 3-1 to in the eighth inning. Check 
Texas and Baltimore tied up 1-1 in the seventh. St. Louis leading Pittsburgh 6-1 at the end of six innings of play. Still don't know how the... There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Well, you wonder why I say I was sorry to see Vukovic go. There's two good reasons right there. He has looked better than anybody who has pitched today. Pardon? He's the only one throwing the ball hard all day. Well, I'll tell you what. He's got a tiger in his tank. He comes out there ready to get you. is really aggressive on that mound. And the batter is Brian Downing. Downing takes the fastball for a strike. Here's the pitch. Up high of all, two and two. Pete Vukovic, the third pitcher employed by Toronto. Youngster from Connemore, Pennsylvania. Just outside Johnstown. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Low of all. So this is the first time he's had a full count on anybody. Three balls and two strikes. Right-hander ready. A 3-2 pitch. Walked him. Bukovic comes off the mound. He thought he had caught the corner in the knees. So now the tying run comes up in the form of Ralph Gar. Ralph, however, goes back to the dugout. He's been out there, and I don't know if he went back just to get a towel. Well, I'll tell you, the last time Ralph was up, he hit a shot that the pitcher didn't realize he had. Otherwise, this ball game would not be in favor of Toronto by two. So Ralph went back, wiped the that off and now comes out and that was the only time that Ralph was not on base he has walked he's gotten on in an air he's got two hits and he is grounded out actually not a ground out he just lined right to the pitcher here's the pitch here's a swing and a foul about hit the Blue Jays 14 to 13. I think that's the thing that's impressed me is the fact they've got 13 hits and they have really waylaid the ball today. Two home runs by Doug Alt, a pitch home run by Al Woods in his first major league time at bat. Here's the one strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Boy, he took something off of that and God, it was hit like he was about 10 feet in front of that pitch. his time now. Up with the glove, down to the waist. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a drive into left field. It's going to drop in there for a base hit. Downing will hold it second. So on a two-strike pitch, Gar slices it into left field, and we're going to have a pinch hitter for Alan Bannister. Looks like Niles Nyman, a left-handed hitter. And that's who it will be. So after Vukovic struck out two men, he walked Downing, and Gar gets his third hit of the afternoon. The tying runs are on base again. On oh, the White Sox stranded two in the first, two in the second, three in the third, two in the fourth, two in the fifth, three in the sixth, and two in the seventh. And now I have two men on now. Tim Nordbrook loosening up down the right side. He'll come in to play shortstop. Niles Nyman. Will pinch hit here. This is Niles's first appearance since a year ago. He was in eight games for the White Sox. Your attention, please. Then hit only 133, then went to Des Moines, where he hit 282. They've introduced him as Nils Nyman, which is easy to do. Niles, N-Y-L-S, L-E-S. No, I was right the first time, N-Y-L-S. There's a pitcher, a swing and a grounder, right to the first baseman. He's got it, and that retires the side. Niles Nyman went after the first pitch. And 
grounded out to the first baseman. And the White Sox strand two more. They have stranded 18 today. In the eighth, no runs, one hit, no errors. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. Two men left on. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Toronto seven, the White Sox five. Toronto, Tim Nordbrook has come in to play shortstop. The attendance here this afternoon at freezing 32 degrees with snow flurries, 44,649. 4-4-6-4-9. John Scott will lead it off, the number one hitter in the order. He'll be followed by Jim Mason and Doug Hall. Dave Hamilton on the mound. Working his second inning, he's allowed no runs, one hit, and he has struck out a man. Here's the first pitch to Scott, a swing and a foul. Jackie Moore, the third pace coach, goes and gets it. White Sox were out in front, 4-1, to one, and they fell behind, 7-4, to four, and now it's 7-5 to five with one more shot to go in the night. Here's the one-strike pitch. Inside a ball, evens the count up at 1-1. One and one. Well, no baseball tomorrow. There will be Saturday and Sunday afternoon here on WMAQ Radio. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Good curveball for a strike. Danny, what's the latest on the Blackhawks? What are they playing next? They're playing tonight. Is it going to be on neutral ice or at New York? At New York. Left hand ready. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a long drive. Going way back. to the wall, and I don't really think he knew where he was at. He just reached up his glove, and the ball bounced over. It looked like a ball that should have been caught at the wall, but as is, it turns into a double. Well, you can hear that Blackhawk game tonight here on WMAQ. Oh, this kid is something. 
at 300 while he was up with Texas at the end of the season last year. After hitting 313 with 25 homers and 83 RBIs at Sacramento. A lot of young talent on this club that had great years in AAA and they have not been phased at all by this large gathering here in Toronto or the pressures of being the first American League club in Canada. And now Bob Lemon comes out of the White Sox dugout and we may have a pitching change here in Toronto. And a lot of right-handers do up. Hamilton in a discussion with Lemon, Downing, Soderholm. White Sox can't afford to allow any more runs here with only one more crack at the Blue Jays. That coming in the ninth inning. Last year, the White Sox won their opener four to nothing over Kansas City. And that's going to be all for Dave Hamilton. So Hamilton pitches one complete inning. He's allowed one run on three hits. He didn't walk anybody. And he struck out a man. But the runners at first and second are his responsibility. And Laren LeGrow comes into the contest making his first as a White Sox pitcher. However, he is not unfamiliar to the American League having pitched for the Detroit Tigers in part of 70, 72, 73, and all of 74 and 75, and then going over to the Cardinals a year ago. So he'll get in his warm-up tosses here in Toronto, and as he does, I'll tell you what we've got. In baseball, the kicker messed up here in Toronto. Kansas City 7 to 4. Boston over Cleveland 3 to 1 at the end of 8. Texas and Baltimore in the 7th tied up 1 1. The Cardinals out in front of Pittsburgh 6 to 1 at the end of 6. on that cut game is one-to-one -one at the end of three against the Mets. I'm sure that's a lot further along. But I apologize, but the pickers are not working in Canada. Laren LeGrow comes in. He pitched at Tulsa in the American Association a year ago where he won six and lost ten. And he was 0-1 for the St. Louis Cardinals making his first appearance as a member of the White Sox. Six kids, 6'5", 230 pounds. Born in Phoenix, Arizona. Originally the property of the Detroit Tigers. So the first man that he will face will be Otto Velez, the designated hitter. One for three today, and he is also one. here. All the people yelling they want beer. This ball club is owned by one of the largest, if not largest, breweries in Canada. Labatt. All right, LeGrow is ready. Working out of a stretch in the first pitch. And it goes off the chest protector of Brian Downing. And off to the left, ball one. Velez is shortened up to punt. Our run is in. Runners are at first and second. Nobody out. The Blue Jays have scored in six of the eight innings played today. One in the first, one in the second, two in the third, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, and one here in the eighth. Right-hander delivers, and it's low, ball two. In the ninth inning, the White Sox will have Orta, Zisk, and Spencer. Well, that's why that one run here really hurts, because if you can get Orta on, you've always got that shot of Zisk pumping one out of here to try to tie it up. But as it is now, the Sox are down by three, and Toronto threatening. 2-0 pitch, cut it, out in front of the plate. Oh, and Spencer and Downing collide, and the bases are loaded. Spencer came charging in, and the ball is only about 10 feet down the line towards first. Definitely Brian's ball. Orta had covered first on the play, and the two collide. And it'll go. 
foul. I presume it's got to as an infield hit. And the bases are loaded. Nobody out. Wow, it really hurt. Two more runs, and 
So the score at the end of eight full innings is the Blue Jays nine, the White Sox five. But this is the first game the Blue Jays have played at Exhibition Stadium. And here's the man now with the save in his hand, Pete Zukovic. Three wins, uh, three strikeouts away from Toronto's first victory. Leading off for the White Sox to the top of the ninth. Number George six, the Ford second of the second base for leadoff. Richie Zisk and Jim Spencer are due to follow him. First pitch to him is a ball. Both ball one. He has hit this today. He walked one. Kukovic missed with a second pitch. The one thing you don't want to do with a four-run lead in the ninth inning is put any men on base with a walk. Third pitch. That's strike inside. So it's two and one. Kukovic looking quickly again. Low for a ball. Ball three. There's the look down to the third base coach, Bobby Kanat, for the signal as to what they're going to do. On him on. Swings at it. An easy out to walk. Run away. I'm very surprised George Gordon swung at that three and one pitch. Four runs behind in the ninth inning. Uh, kind of think that maybe, you know, he should take a pitch and see if he can get that base on ball. Here's the power in the White Sox batting order. Richie the Zip. right fielder, Richie Zip. He has himself four hits. The pair of singles, a two base hit on a home run in five appearances. The mask off, he might have had some dirt fly off of his face. He appears to be all right. The young man of the plate, Richie Ziff, that command all kinds of respect for American League pitchers. Look at it, deal through. such a good hitter over the last few years. He can hit the all field. He struck him out. The Toronto Blue Jays are one out away from their first victory. Don, I think we're going to hit quite a roar if they can get this next batter out. These fans are just been great today. They're really pulling for these young Toronto Blue Jays. Chicago's last hope is Jim Spencer, the first baseman. Got a pair of base hits and five at bat. Vukovic, very strong in relief of Jerry Johnson, who will get the win. First hit, one on, the field. God can't get to it. Johnson passed him, and Spencer will take two. Johnson just a foot or so away from the third out, but waited too long on the ball. I think he, he should have caught the ball, really, Don. He, uh, it looked like he was going to catch it easy, and then all of a sudden he went down with that glove, and uh, maybe we'll see a replay of it. But he came awfully close to it, and off hit the, the bottom of the glove. glove. So they charged him with an error. Number seven. Most designated hitter with a man on second base, Jim Spencer. Look at that pitches to him. Ground ball to the shortstop. Up with it. Blue Jays Team. 
16 hits. They committed no errors. Well, the Blue Jays score the nine runs, nine get 16 runs, hits, hits, committed three errors. The White Sox, five runs, 15 hits, and no errors. The Toronto wins it nine to five. The losers in the West. Gary Johnson gets the win, and the Chicago starter, Ken Brady, starts with a lot. 4,649 appreciative Blue Jay fans at Exhibition Stadium for this opening day victory. A reminder once again that the Blue Jays are well, there are stars in this game today. Sunday, a lot of players who made a fine contribution for the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't think anybody made a better one than the man who hit two home runs, Doug Ald. He's with Tom McKee right now. But we'll be talking to him in just a moment as they get organized on the field. This is Major League Baseball 77. All across Canada, people are joining in on community activities. This is the day of the big race. Just to go over the rules quickly one more time. The rider must be covered, and the team pushers cannot exceed four in number. Okay, away they go. The annual bed race is on. like just before you came out? Everybody was uh, really up for the game. Uh, they really wanted to win. It was kind of a silent, uh, quiet atmosphere. Uh, I think everybody was really getting ready in their own way. But as you know, there's a lot of people on this team that uh, other major league teams uh, didn't protect. And uh, I think that everybody has a feeling uh, that they want to show somebody something and also that uh, we want to win for Toronto. Well, we saw some excitement today. If that's any indication of what we can expect, in our Major League uh, Baseball Series 77 is coming up uh, over the next summer months and along with the uh, Montreal Expos, I tell you, we're in for a heck of a time. I think so, too. Uh, I, th I think that we're going to go out and play every game just like this. Uh, we had a lot of enthusiasm and uh, everybody really wants to win. And all we've been hearing all spring training is how we're going to lose two-thirds of our yeah. games. And uh, then they ask us, well, how many of the other third do you think you're going to win? You know, well, uh, we don't feel that way. We feel that we can go out and win every day that we go out, no matter what team we're playing, and that's just the way we're going to take them. Doug, I think my mental uh, calisthenics up here tell me that you're, if you keep this up, you hit something like 300 home runs this season. Uh, <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it's somewhere near that. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Now, let's go back to Don Chevrolet and Whitey Ford. All right, Tom, and our congratulations. Uh, we'd like to, to add to the uh, young man who hit those two home runs for the Toronto Blue Jays. Remarkable win for the team. Uh, adverse weather conditions, Whitey, to start the game. Then they fall behind 4-1. to one. It looks to be maybe a long afternoon, but they put it together in a lot of areas. Well, you're going to see that with a young team like the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, they just didn't give up. Uh, I tell you, it was an exciting game to me. Uh, the pitching was a little shaky on both sides. Uh, Jerry Johnson uh, 
and I think Vukovic fits very well, but it was the kind of game I liked. There was extra base hits, some good fielding plays, uh, a few stolen bases, and I think uh, I think there was four home runs hit today in the Yes, three by the Blue Jays. Uh, Woods and, of course, Doug Ault getting the two back-to-back -to, -back to excite this crowd here. As a, as a great pitcher yourself, I'd like your analysis on how the Blue Jay pitchers look to you. Well, uh, like I said, uh, um, the starting pitcher, Bill Singer, had a little trouble. He couldn't get to keep the ball down. He has to pit that low to uh, be effective. Uh, Jerry Johnson struggled a few innings, but did a fine job. And then Vukovic come in and uh, just closed the door on the White Sox. And uh, some of the pitches impressed me. Well, they were throwing against a pretty good power. Certainly Zisk and uh, Downing and some of those players in the Chicago White Sox line up, Ralph Gar. They were throwing against some pretty experienced major league hitting. They were. And uh, you mentioned the cold weather all day today. You know, a little snow before the game started. And it's a little tough when your hands are cold out there to try and pitch and have good control. You might be have uh, a lot of speed on the ball or it might break good, but it's a little tough to uh, have good control in, in cold weather like this. Well, nobody expects the Blue Jays to win the pen, at least this year. But uh, what has happened so far is remarkable. They won their very first exhibition game against the New York Mets. They beat the Montreal Expos the first two times they played their new Canadian arch rivals. They beat the Cincinnati Reds, who are missing only one player, Foster. In fact, they set up Johnny Bench to pinch hit on that game, and he hit into a double play, and the Blue Jays beat the Reds, the world champions, 9-8. to So Toronto fans got a lot to get excited about. The main thing is, I think, as you watch this team, they're capable of winning. They're also capable of making mistakes which they will make, but I think their best potential is to give wide-open, exciting baseball to the fans. I think they're going to do that, and uh, they're going to look at that paper tomorrow and see they're in first place, and if they can get off to a, a fairly good start, it's just going to build more and more confidence in these uh, young players, and I think you're going to have an exciting team here this year. They put in 44,600 on a miserable day today, so you can imagine what's going to happen when the sun shines and the spring weather finally arrives here in Toronto. This team has the potential, I think, if they go well, to perhaps it is high is 2 million in spectators in 77. I think that's, that can be done very easily, Don. Well, they're off to a great start today on this win over the Chicago White Sox. The final score is the Blue Jays 9 and the Chicago White Sox 5.